four Sundays, we do our five-minute short service. It's my turn today. Our topic will be sanctification. What? All right, so sanctification is what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to come from 1 Thessalonians 4 and 7. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. In some versions you'll read, and instead of impure, it'll say unclean. Instead of holy, it'll say sanctification. Right. And that's what we're talking about is being sanctified. Um, if you talk about the word sanctified and what it means, when you hear holy, sanctified, consecrate, they all mean basically the same thing. They all just mean to set apart. So you know when they were building the temple, when they built the temple and they had the items in it, they had to sanctify the items, make them holy. They had to consecrate them in the temple. You'll find that in uh, Genesis 40 and 9 and also in Numbers 7. They'll talk about how they sanctified everything after they finished with it. And what that means is they set it aside for God's use. Right. So if you had a cup, for example, if you have a cup and you sanctify that cup, you set that cup apart so that it can only be used for service to God. Okay, so it means if you get thirsty later on during the week or whatever, you just want to drink of water, you can't use that cup. That cup is for God's use. So it's only use at that time. What we want to do is now we have to recognize that we are the temple now. You'll find that in 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. It'll tell you that we are the temple now. Various other verses also. But now that we know that we are the temple, we have to set our bodies, set our lives apart so that we live for God, that our lives are now sanctified, the way we move, the way we act, how we do, how we treat people, that that is sanctified and set apart for God. All right, so we have to be careful now of how we live. How do we handle situations? We can't handle situations the way we used to or the way the world does, because then you wouldn't look set apart, right? You want to look set apart from the world. Right. So when you're in a setting, and you know it's kind of easy to get caught up when you're not paying attention. Say you're in a setting and people are kind of talking about people. You know they got somebody, oh, well, look at it. Did you, did you see this? Did you see what was going on over there? And it's kind of like a downgrade, kind of like talking about somebody. We all been there. We all heard it. But instead of joining in, you need to set yourself apart. And this is just an example where you don't join in and talk about this person. You don't join in and do what everybody else is doing. In fact, the smart thing to do, the godly thing to do, is to step in and say, hey, let's not do that. Right. Especially if you're amongst friends. Now, if you're amongst friends and family and they're doing it, you should have an audience with them where if they're doing something wrong, you have an audience with them to say something. It's called them out. Now, you don't have to do it in a nasty way, but you should be able to say, hey, you know what? We used to live like that but we're trying to do something better now. We're trying to live set apart. So let's not do what we would normally do in talking about people, right. downgrading people, right. things like that. We have to live a life that is noticeably <laughs> set apart when we are set apart and sanctified for God. It can be the same. We can look the same as everybody else. Right. So that's all I want to do this morning, just remind us that we have to be set apart. Our life should be sanctified. We should be doing something different than everybody else. We should not look the same. Right. Amen. Amen. Amen.